Bye guys, thank you. Right, next up. Uh, on Fridays on Critical Mass Radio, 6 to 8, we have the Irate Women Show with Sarah Goodley. Um, the show basically has taken off now. It's the, one of the most listened to, and the podcast especially. Um, each week, amazing guests, a lot to come from Sarah. So what's going to happen now is we're going to have Sarah for three quarters of an hour, have a quick break, and then we're going to have Kate, a sister, to speak straight after. So guys, round of applause, please, for Sarah Goodley. Thank you. Okay, we'll get straight on with it then. So, um, my talk today is on secure base of attachment, and why it's important, where, where, what it is, etc. So, I'll go straight on the next slide. So, a lot of our stuff that we do, Kate and I, within the company we're on Birth for Life, is to do with attachment. And it's basically around John Bowlby's theory. Although the science of there is now the science behind it because what Kate will be talking about is the oxytocin factor, which is really the science behind the, um, the attachment theory. So, this is the latest, if you like, attachment model. So, this is more uh, Richard Bowlby's import than it was John Bowlby's. There's been lots of, if you want to look it up, there's been lots of attachment models before this. But this is the most recent one, and it's the one that really makes sense. Because the ones before didn't take into account the, the importance of fathers. Now, um, I think you'll all agree that father's role in society has been diminished to such a degree that it's causing major issues now, and it's becoming quite obvious what, what's going on. Yep. So this is, this is the, um, the latest one, which shows basically that you've got two primary attachment figures rather than one. It was just it just used to be the mother. But it's always been the case, obviously, but it's just how the, the model's been viewed. So um, well, you need two people. Usually mother and father. doesn't have to be. It can be uh, d different <coughs> patterns on that. But generally speaking, mother and father. And you need the secure base and comfort, food, warmth, nurture, love. But also, if you've only got that, then children don't grow in, they don't get as outgoing, they don't get to cope with life better. Uh, so you need something to give them the excite and explore. And that is very much tends to be the, the father's role, not exclusively. Uh, for instance, with Kate's children, he, um, your other half. Single mother. <laughs> yeah, buckled oh off when God. you were 16 weeks yeah, pregnant yeah. with your okay. second on. one. All right, yeah, we'll, we'll okay. do, yeah. So, very much so, we've needed... <laughs> yes. Blame it all on her. Blame it all on her. So, very much so, you've needed extra people to call fill that role model, haven't you? And the people that came into play were Brother Andrew, Michael, um, and I've sort of done a lot of stuff with the, the old swimming and taking them out on adventure days and everything like that. The, the stronger these people are, the less you need this really, but you do still need it. But the, the weaker these people are, then the more you need this. So, you know, the, the whole idea, and Kate will be talking about the oxytocin in birth, but if you get that strong at birth, then that's a really, really good thing. Um, and then you've got, actually this is the wrong slide. Yeah, but... It, What's the next one? No. Is the next one the... No, I've just put the wrong slide up. But the, that, that's, that's the second latest attachment one. I've actually copied that up. Um, but yeah, father now is in this box. So he's in the primary attachment figure. I thought I'd changed it, but obviously I haven't. Grandmother, grandfather, older siblings, um, nanny childminder, aunt teachers. These are all the, the people. You put all of it, you need the love, nurture, food, warmth, and you need the excite and explore. And you need degrees of that. Okay, round. Well. Now, when we're talking about secure base, this is what we're talking about. Okay. So, can we have a couple of volunteers? <laughs> I actually need, I need a child. Who's going to be a child? Okay. Need a mum. Need a mum. Who's going to be, who's going to be Kate's mum? Come on, <laughs> Okay. Right. Who's going to be Kate's dad? <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> right? And who's going to be a scary monster? Can I have somebody being a scary monster? Wonderful. Well done. Right. Well, this is the most functional to... family I've <laughs> yeah, ever seen. It's just like what I've got at home, don't worry. Right, you'd be a scary monster just here for me. Right. Yeah, thank you very much. What's your name, sorry? Neil. Neil, right, thank you. Right, so we have got Kate's mum, yeah? <laughs> yeah, looks like she's having another one, look. <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, mate. So, you're going to give her all the food, nurture, warmth, love, yeah, 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 give it all that. Give her a cuddle then, give her a cuddle. Yeah, that's brilliant, alright. But, well, after a while, she needs to develop and grow a bit. So, she needs a father figure, if you like, to take on a bit of an adventure. Give her a bit of the action and adventure. Careful. So take Kate on a bit of a walk, yeah? Don't need to be taken in the pub. Yeah. I was brought up in a pub. Okay. Now, but, but dads being what dads do, they tend to take, go a bit too far sometimes, yeah? So, yeah. So actually, you come here and you meet the scary monster. Me? Yeah, yeah both of you. Yeah, out. you've gone a bit too far and you've met a scary monster. Ooh. Be a bit scarier than that. <laughs> Look, I thought you, yeah, you're scary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, too much. Right, I've got to do a bit of poo or something. Okay, so you're a bit upset now, yeah? Yeah. So you need, you need to cuddle her and take her back to mum for a, like... I want my mum. Yeah, you want your mum. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you very much, guys, for that. Thank you very much. <laughs> So basically that's just bringing that model to life, okay? So you've got your, your secure base where you get your food, nurture, warmth, love. If the, 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 um, the stuff that Peggy Harlow did, the experiments that Peggy Harlow did, the, the monkeys in the, um, in the laboratories that were the worst off were the ones that didn't have any mother figure at all. The ones that were next worst off were the ones where it was just a um, wire, fur covered wire, and something feeding them. Then it was the single mothers and the very depressed single mothers with, in the cage, basically, just with their babies. Um, the next best bomb was the just mother, father, um, and the, the baby in the cage. But by far, I'm hoping it's the next slide. No. Back to that. Right, monkey family. By far the best monkey family was one where mum and dad's in the cages, and then you've got uh, an area where only the babies could get through. So this was a highly enriched area where people, uh, the baby monkeys could go and play together. And they were free to go in and out of all these different monkey families, if you like. And that was by far, they were the healthiest, most well-developed monkeys in the laboratory. But the tests that were done with Peggy Harlow's husband, who wasn't quite so nice with the monkeys as Peggy Harlow was. But even she wasn't that nice. Yeah, even she wasn't that nice, because it was, yes. But very much, I mean, we look at how we are. We all live on the same road, don't we? There's a big family of us all live on the same road. And very much our kids just go in and out of each other's houses. Um, and, but, and also, we've got a back door to the pub as well, which isn't on this model, so, yeah, quite a small Can't afford to go in it in a minute. No, can't afford to go in it in a minute. So, the secure, the secure base model then is what, basically, all humanity and all other species as well, this is what we need, this is what's needed for us all. And we're very much strayed away from this. Now, when I was doing um, my masters in, in counselling children and young people, I was doing it at the same time as I was doing a drug and alcohol course. And what interested me, I saw, I saw something. One week we had the attachment model, uh, which included the, the self-regulation graph. And I noticed something really interesting, because the same week we had a model about poly drug use. And I, I noticed something really, really interesting. So this is a self-regulation graph. So if you can imagine, if you've got an attached parent, um, and they pretty much know how to respond to the person, to the to the actual um, baby or child or son, daughter, etc. 
So they um, know when the nappy needs changing, they know when the baby needs feeding, they know when it just wants to cuddle, they know when it just wants to be put down. And it, that keeps the, this drama, if you like, the stress in this nice curve. Yeah? So you need a bit of stimulation, you need a bit of exciting explore, but when it gets too much, you need somebody to mirror what it is to be normal, to, be, to bring it back down. What happens when you haven't got somebody that's in tune with that baby, or that child, or that human being, is that you get the high drama, high state of excitement and arousal, and then exhaustion, and so you've got to sleep. Yeah. And what happens is that becomes a, it happens as a, as a very small child, and that becomes, if you like, a blueprint to what is expected and what feels normal. So high drama, sleep, high drama, sleep. And it's quite funny because when you look at our backgrounds, you know, my family nickname is the drama queen. And very much when you look at my birth, um, if you look at what was happening when I was very young, then it was very much high drama, sleep, high drama, sleep. I didn't quite know where I fitted. So you go on. And what do you notice? That's a polydrug use chart. Same. Same chart. And then I started noticing that you can basically superimpose any addiction, any form of addiction, onto the same self-regulation graph. So you could that could be alcohol, that could be gambling, that could be sex, it could be truthing. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it could be any, any addiction, Facebook, you know, <laughs> anything, any high drama, anything that you need, high drama and sleep. And, um, yeah, there's the sex one, it's where you get your, and of course that's the oxytocin hormone. What's that? You see what's sex? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Kate's department, she'll tell you on that later. Yeah. Okay. So we've done the uh, monkey family. So just briefly, this is just showing how these patterns of behaviour go from generation to generation to generation. Now this is my family tree, if you like, my family, well, matrilineal line. This is my matrilineal line. Now, um, there's been a element of eldest daughter napping for what we can see of being five generations of eldest daughter napping, where the daughter, eldest daughter has been brought up by the grandmother, and that's actually gone on for five generations. Now, interestingly, and very sadly, what's happened, because my daughter as well was my, sort of, sort of taken over by my mum, and I was, uh, she had me when she was very young, I was adopted to Nessie, and this has gone on and gone on. Nessie was brought up by Minnie, and it's just, just that's how it's gone on. Only break was that one, wasn't it? Because she didn't really, she wasn't really child friendly, was she? I don't she think. Wasn't really a mother, was she? No, no. So um, that was the only that was the only difference. But basically, every what we can find that's gone on for multi generations. Now um, there's been two stillborn daughters to my daughters, and you'd be pleased to know that the pattern has been broken. I'm sorry to get emotional. But we have a lovely Ira Elizabeth who was born at last. We've got a live daughter, granddaughter, and she was born on the 28th of December last year. I know, yeah. So we really do think that we've, we've killed the pattern, haven't we? And so we've killed the pattern. Stars, Absolutely. Yeah. That. Yeah. Absolutely. And, we, and that's we, the thing you can change. The exactly. Exactly. And that's what I want to come on to. And I'm sorry for getting emotional. Well, actually, I shouldn't apologise for emotion. It's okay. 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 Yeah. But at long last, we have broken that pattern. Because Charlotte and patterns, would have been yours. Yeah. Because Char Charlotte would have been mine, yeah, definitely. So I would have been bringing Charlotte up. <coughs> so with what happened with, with relationships and things with Emma later on. So, uh, yeah, but. That pattern has been broken, we have consciously worked on it. We've done a lot of work on it as well, haven't we? And at last we have got a live granddaughter. So I'm very proud to say that. Okay. 
Right, um, so this is, I know, uh, yeah. <laughs> so a bit more emotion, we always, we always, yeah. This is my father, and this is Catherine's father. And my sisters, we've got the same mum, but we've got different dads, and they were best friends. <clears throat> now Dave, um, I, he ne I never sort of knew him as, my, I knew he was my biological father, but only when I was 14 by reading my mum's diary. <laughs> But <laughs> I was never actually told. <laughs> but this again, this is an interesting story. It makes the point on this secure base, and it makes the point on the the epigenetics and everything that we're, we're talking about. Because um, he was a war baby. He was born in 1944 in Nottingham, and at the age of three, I think reading between the lines, his um, mother's husband was returning home and probably been in a prisoner of war camp something like that, and she had to get rid of him because she had an affair with an Italian who was here in, during the war. So, yes, yeah, so I've got the Italian, uh, <laughs> the Italian connection all over the place, isn't there? Um, and then he, he was a um, very troubled person, and, um, sorry, should we say person, should have Dave? <laughs> He's a very tr troubled human being. Man. Big man, yeah, right. very troubled man because of his early experiences and he had diphtheria and he was slightly deaf and everything. Uh, but he was a bit of a hero on the lifeboat and I've actually got press cuttings of people that he'd saved on the beach as a, as a lifeguard. And he, he, he could, um, he was a bit sort of superhuman in a way. And he could like swim out to the two mile boy, sit on it for 10 minutes and then swim back. And he used to be seemed to be able to bring people back with resuscitation at a time when you could, you, it wasn't really didn't really happen that much. But couldn't understand it. Could they? No, they couldn't really understand how he had this sort of gift, if you like. But then, for some reason, um, he at the age of about thirty, someone I've heard different things that he, he went into the tunnel run and he got bashed about a bit in the head. Someone else said he had an LSD tablet dropped in his drink. And, um, but he got uh, paranoid schizophrenia, that's what it was labelled as. Or, you know, I wonder now whether he had some sort of walk-in with the experience of having the, the LSD, whether he, knowing what I know now, I wonder whether he had some sort of walk-in. He had sat somebody, a young girl, in Grimsby and ended up in prison. And then he ended up very quickly sort of running the wing, if you like, or running, it was bizarre what happened. And they quite quickly realised that uh, or he was put under the Mental Health Act, where he remained for 30-odd years. And he died, some, I think it was 2007 he died, wasn't it? And that was a couple of months before he died. And he said to me, uh, when I went to see him on Christmas Eve, that on New Year's Day he was going to get his 21-year-old body back. I'll just show you. You know, that's the sort of good looking chap that he used to look like an Adonis apparently, he was a really good looking fella. Um, and he told me that on New Year's Day he was going to get his 21 year old body back. He actually fell really ill on New Year's Eve and thought he was going to die on New Year's Day. And he actually, but when he was telling me on New, on Christmas Eve, he said, um, he says, I'm, I'll, I'm going to get my 21 year old body back on, on New Year's Day. He says, no, 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 it was the 22nd of April, he said. And that's when he died. Down on the 22nd of April. So. Okay, so that's just a, a bit of a thing. If you can imagine what has happened in our family to affect our secure base, we've got all of that history. And the big thing I want you all to get familiar with is the epigenetics, because the epigenetics makes absolute sense. Now, the epigenetics is co connected completely with our DNA. Everything that our ancestors have felt, thought, experienced, been exposed to is encoded in our DNA. And that's not just one or two generations, that's however long those lines have existed. <coughs> both, both matrilineal lines and patrilineal lines. And that's all encoded in our miles and miles and miles of DNA that we've got that stretches around the world several times in each, each one of us. One of the best um, things to look at um, if you're looking at if you want to look at epigenetics there's a brilliant uh, documentary on YouTube which is why grandmas are important 
And I'd implore you all to have a look at that to get your heads around it. it it's a quite simple explanation of the epigenetics, but really fascinating. But it, it makes you realise how we are being exposed to this, which is the genomicide. So what else affects? So we've got all that history, all that history in our DNA that we've got that affects our secure base and how we think, feel, and experience. Also, pregnancy experience, which and birth experience, which Kate will go, go on to. Also, the transgenerational trauma. Now, I've given you a bit of a uh, explanation of the transgenerational trauma that we've had in our family, and Kate will probably tell you more about her father, who you saw a picture of earlier, who was um, basically abused from the age of four to fourteen, wasn't he? And how that impacts on the generation that never even met him, but. It's, it's all there, and it's all part of our history. Uh, also, environmental factors. So, everything that's naturally going on in the environment, but also everything that's that we know is being manipulated. And that's where you go into the genome <coughs> side, and by that I'm talking chemtrails, I'm talking vaccines. We are talking to a, a gentleman last night from America, who so saw even the wind turbines are involved in this. Um, all the, the GMO crops, drugs, pharmaceuticals, everything, that's all it's absolute genomicide and all to alter our natural way of being. And it was interesting that I um, talked, at, spoke at the Amash conference last year and it seems very much when you talk to experiencers that <coughs> there's, the, there's the two things that seem to be coming in. There's the sort of angelic human reaching our own true potential in our own time and then there's very much the manipulated, controlled um, alteration, if you like, the transhumanism. So that's, that's coming down, there's two streams that are coming down that are basically seem to be sort of fighting one another. But this is, this is massive and it's a massive manipulation that's going on. Dr. Rimmer LeBeau is a fantastic resource to look at the genome side if you want to look at, look at that bit more. <coughs> so, secure base in life. What we're talking about with Secure Base is the extended womb, if you like. If you think of everything that you get in the womb, you get food, love, warmth, nurture, you get everything you get spoken to, you get talked to, you get, you get all the food you need. It's all unconditional. You get a bit of excitement. Yeah, you do get a bit of excitement explore usually as well. But the baby doesn't have to ask for that, it doesn't have to do anything for it. But that's what happened. It just, it just gets it. And it's in the mother's best interest to make sure that her own needs are met so that she can... Because that baby will just take anyway. That, that, that infant will just take. So um, it's a good time for them to look at the mother to look after herself because then she can freely give. And I suppose that's what we all need to do. And it's something very much that we need to... you know. We're all very supportive of each other in uh, critical mass and the, the network, and I know Rob's helped me a lot, and we all seem to sort of help each other at times, don't we? We're using our skills and different things, and um, very much that's unconditional. That's not, I'll, I'll help you with that if you pay me this, or if you do this for me. It's just, a, it's just a case of, if somebody needs something, they get it. But you can only give what you've got yourself. You know, you have to, you, the, I used to say, I'll still say, it's a wise woman that quenches her own thirst first. I don't always live by it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but that's, that's very much... It. I'm a bit rubbish at it. I'm a bit rubbish at it. But it's a mantra that I have to keep saying to myself. But it is very, very true. Because if you think of a pregnant mother, if a pregnant mother isn't looking after herself, she can't look after a baby properly. But that baby will completely... It'll take what it needs anyway. And if, if it's not there, eventually, you know, the worst thing that could happen is that that, that, that child dies because it's not, the mother isn't getting what it needs, what the, what the child needs. So it's a circle that we all need to be okay. You know, we all need to have our cup filled, if you like. Um, so, yeah, nutrition, warmth, water, love, support, forgiveness, protection, your needs for growth and that. That's what we're talking about, the extended womb, if you like. So you've got the womb, you've got the extended womb. So can we think of healthy, unconditional, Extended wounds. Healthy family, yeah? 
healthy family could be a, 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 an extended room, healthy community, yeah. neighbours, where you're all looking after one another, and that can go on and on, can't it? Anything that's healthy and unconditional and you share and you, you make sure that everybody's needs are met, that's, a, that's, a, that's an extended room. <clears throat> what we tend to have is the insecure base in life. This is what the, the manipulated what. And we all need the womb. All of us need the womb. And if we don't get the extended organic womb, if you like, our um, extended womb, then we look to the um, artificial womb. And you've only got to read Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. Um, yeah, that's the right way around, isn't it? Yeah. And they talk about the artificial womb. And the artificial womb's been offered all the time. And truth is, Dave was, was saying about um, he's been offered things at the moment, the monetary things. And that's like enticing you back into the artificial womb. Where your needs are met sporadically, but, or you think that your needs are being met, but it's um, conditional and it's at a price. And there's an there's a interesting um, experiment that was done with chickens. And this experiment, they basically had chickens in one bit where it was, if they pressed a the but button, they got the corn. And they had another bit where if they pressed the button, sometimes they got the corn. And then they had another bit where they pressed the button and they didn't get a corn, any corn at all. So what happened was, the, what the one where they pressed the button, they didn't get any corn. Then they just you know, got depressed and curled up in the corner and died, basically. The one where the chickens was just pressed the button, they got the corn. Pressed the button, got the corn, got on with their lives, went back, got corn whenever they needed it. So they didn't obsess about it, they didn't crave it, they just knew that it was there. And so they always just went to get the corn when it was needed, pressed the button, it was there. What happened with the one in the middle where they, um, sometimes they got it, sometimes they didn't. All the chicken would do was sit and they'd obsess, and all they would do was press the button, hoping to get the corn. Yeah. And um, I think that's a really powerful experiment. I mean, it's not horrible that they do any animal experiments, I agree. But it's an interesting analogy with what's happening with, if you like, the artificial womb. And if you think of um, <coughs> where this artificial womb is offered, You've got state, military, prison, institutions, gang culture, dysfunctional family, where love and food comes at a price and has to be paid for in some way. <coughs> and, and really, that's you know pretty much all of what we're exposed to in the in the what we're all, all talking about all the time, isn't it? It's not unconditional; it's all with conditions. So I'm sure you've, uh, you've all seen these sort of um, pyramid structures, if you like. Okay? <laughs> yeah, one of them. Yeah. But um, that's the sort of paradigm of a capitalist system. And this is really the system that, that we're in at the moment, if you like. And this is a, like a corporate <coughs> system. But what you notice is that it's a place where the psychopathic personalities drive and they, they're the ones that get to the top because what happens with those is that they will basically they'll start at the bottom like everybody else or most of the time unless they're born into an elite family and then they'll start at the top and they bypass all this but they'll you know, start at the bottom and what they learn to do is use everybody around them so the real people with the skills and the knowledge they will lead them dry if you like and when they've got whatever they've got out of them then they elbow them out of the way and start um, doing the bullying tactics and what have you and they will do the cuckoo, cuckoo in the nest thing and get to the next level and then they'll do the same where they will manipulate pitch people's ideas yeah you've got you've got somebody in mind at the moment haven't you Kate <laughs> who's dined out on a lot of your work yeah and got awards for it. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> proud. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they will, you know, put, again, cuckoo in the nest syndrome. They'll have a supply of people around them that they'll use all their information, their skills, their real knowledge, the real genuine um, people that know what's happening. 
adopt it as their own, then they'll alienate those people and get rid of them and get up the ladder and get up the ladder and get up the ladder. And that's, that's how, this is the system where the psychopaths survive, if you like. And um, the, the psychopathic personalities are often the ones that have, have not had their needs met as well. They're the ones that have really not had their needs met and have learned to um, use basically all the manipulations and what have you to get where they get. And a lot of trauma-based mind control, if you start looking into trauma-based mind control, those sort of behaviours, a lot of it is food deprivation, sleep deprivation, love deprivation, everything that, that they use to... Training. Yeah. Yeah, that's an, interesting, that's an interesting fact, actually, that <coughs> when you look at the doctor's training and you look at the medical doctor um, who goes to medical school, and all the medical schools are basically run by the, the Rockefeller uh, foundations and what have you. So uh, it's all pharmacological based, and the training for not just medical doctors, but also social workers, you name it, anything where they need this indoctrination, it's all a form, the training is all a, force of, a, a, um, a form of trauma-based mind control. Yeah, midwives as well, yeah, everything. It's all sleep deprivation, don't have time to eat, don't have time to just study, 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 work, 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 study, study, study. Most traumatic cases, you're given all the real traumatic, horrible cases. <coughs> so you sort of become immune to it, to it all, really. And just learn to switch yourself off and... Go up there, so that's what happens. <coughs> there is another way, and that's what we're all about solutions at this radio station and what we talk about. And there is another way. This has got to come to an end. Yeah. So when you look at the um, indigenous tribes, if you look at North American Indians and um, every other indigenous culture, this is more the model, the powwow, you know. It's where you've got people with skills and experience and they freely share, but those people are also supported by those around them and everybody supports everybody else. A bit like we were saying what we, we do with the radio station. So you've got, you know, you've got your leaders, if you like. Come on, stand, standing over there. But you don't boss anybody about, you don't, uh, you don't you know, use a big stick or anything like that, he's not there at the top of the triangle, he's in there among us, supporting, and, um, yeah, <laughs> what are you looking? <laughs> yeah, is it su supporting and being there and making sure we're all right, and even if we piss him off occasionally, like, he'll still, he'll, he'll probably have a moan and what have you, but he'll come back and go, okay, you know, are you all right? Are you just check, checking him we're okay and everything. And also, but we support him, and we support each other. And there's a fantastic model, of Sandy Bloom did a fantastic um, model, it's called the Sanctuary Project, and it's well worth having a look at as well, which really looks into how people dealing with trauma are traumatised themselves. So, you know, I'm a classic example of that, and we, everybody needs support, everyone who's dealing with trauma. If you're dealing with traumatised people, you're helping traumatised people, you need support because you're traumatised. Yeah, so everyone needs this sort of hand-holding and it's a mutual thing. And I think that the North American powwow is, is very much the, the way of looking at that, that, yeah, everyone's there. If there's a problem, <coughs> look at it, see what's best, see how everyone can help, see what everyone can do to make the situation right. And that works in the family, that works in the community, that works in the, the, the region, the district, and the country, and the world, yeah. Um, and it's a far better model than the pyramid model that we've got and what we need to aim for. And the answer to it all, and this comes into cakes, this is the answer. Love and nutrition. All you need to put everything right, what we've said, if you look at the epigenetics, when they did the, we did the experiments with the Gucci mice, and these are Gucci mice, they, um, if they were in a traumatised, stressed state, they would give birth to these yellow babies that um, would be very obese. They would be um, just eating it. They wouldn't have an off switch, and they're just eating, 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 eating. And 
what makes it right, what makes it so that they had very short lives and had lots of illnesses and da da da, what makes it right is if you feed those um, fat yellow babies, if you like, if you feed, feed them well, feed them good nutrition, and if they're given lots of love. So the mothers that lick them a lot and um, groom them a lot and everything, then they were the ones, the, the next generation then will be born okay. They will be born without these problems. So they needed the, the love and they needed the good nutrition. And when we did experiments as well with a, um, I can't remember, but again, it's on the, it's on the why grandmas are important. But what they noticed with a, 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 an actual mountain community, who genetics hadn't been changed for, for generations and generations and generations, but also they had times of famine and times of plenty because of the, the where they were. But what they noticed was it was the grandchildren that when there'd been starvation, it was the grandchildren that's health was affected. And that makes perfect sense when you look at it's the whatever's going on is the is the grandmother who's creating the uh, o the ovaries for or the ovens for the granddaughter, if you like, and the grandson and the testes for the grandsons. That's when it's basically that's created. So whatever's going on in the um, environment in the grandparents is really important, and for the grandmother especially. And whatever's going on at the time of puberty for the, for the father is really important because that's when the sperm's been developed. So this is why within a generation or so, they, ch they change. When they say survival of the fittest, it's not survival of the fittest, it's survival of the most adaptable. And within a couple of generations, things can be changed. And they thought for a long time it would take hundreds of years for... Um, and they thought it was in the Darwin theory that people, of any species, if you like, would adapt over lots and lots of generations and it would be a mutant that would be born, that survived, and, to, and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's not right. What happens is, the, uh, with epigenetics, is that it actually, straight, it straight away, within a generation or so, something happens and then the, the genes, if you like, switch on and off accordingly and um, people and humans and animals and species as general change to suit the environment, <coughs> survive the environment and that happens very quickly, not over generations and generations, it's very quickly. But what switches these negative genes off, if you like, we've got genes that switch on, switch off, switch on, switch off, it's about our, depending on the environment, then the thing that puts them right is love, so love, mother's love, father's love, family love, love of community, and good nutrition. Right, which leads me straight on to Kate's talk. And thank you very much. Okay. Sarah? Yep. I think the term you used was uh, transgenerational trauma. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Would you consider uh, abortion transgenerational? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Because uh, when, you've had a, when you've had a death of any sort, a miscarriage, when you've had, we actually did some work on this at university, and um, and everything. A mis if you if you've if you've, got, you've got a mother that's been for a, an abortion, that impacts <coughs> on the next pregnancy, in worry, guilt, trauma, everything, and everything that a mother thinks, feels, experiences goes into the next generation. So often, we look at dyslexia, massive amounts of dyslexia in our family, and when you look at it, I've not covered that, but you know. It's, we haven't got time really, but um, it's the ones of us that are where the mothers have been stressed during pregnancy that have got dyslexia. Kate hasn't got dyslexia. Now you were born, one was married and everything was okidori. I'm the only legitimate child in the family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she hasn't got dyslexia. My middle daughter, she was the only one that was born. I was married, no trauma, no drama. And she's the only one that hasn't, out of my kids, that isn't dyslexic. So... It's, that's the yeah, it's a massive massive thing. Ma maternal stress, maternal stress, and, and what have you. Yeah, yeah. And I really worry about this. I really worry that in vaccinations and in food, we are feeding, we are giving our children cells of aborted fetuses. And energetically, I re I'm really concerned about that. Yeah. Sorry, could you say that again? I said in vaccinations and in food. 
pet secrets and stuff. There's, they say that it's not in there now, but it, there's lots of it's users of flavouring. The cells have bought as fetuses. So. Now, energetically, what the hell's that doing? Yeah. yeah so it's, it's a kind of a rhetorical question, but um, it's just to reiterate, it's the artificial wound. It's it's not something that's happened by accident. Like, oh no no no. It's no, something that's no. been engineered deliberately yeah. to serve an agenda. Yeah, that's control. That's control, isn't it? It's control. It's not. It's not a healthy way of going on. It takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of time. It takes. Why? You know why? When we could just all get on and love one another. We do, we tend to. We tend to have petty little arguments and things. But generally speaking, we all get on, don't we? And so yeah, it's, it's only it's only fighting for it's only fighting for through scarcity. That's that causes problems, really, isn't it? <coughs> if if you think finite resources are limited, which is, we know they're not. Right? Uh, you, when you speak about uh, transgenerational trauma, yeah. how, would that, how would that manifest itself? Well, it manif it, the, tra the whole transgeneration it manifests itself as illness, it manifests itself as genetic disorders, it manifests itself as mental health issues, um, you name it. Every, everything, everything that we struggle with, really, it manifests itself as. So, so I've got a condition called antifuscolipid syndrome. Um, and, uh, would that be a traumatic experience in my sort of like more than likely it, either either that or an environmental experience or what have you? But it'll probably come it'll come down as a myism through the through the uh, DNA. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. For instance, a, a good one that um, psoriasis. Generally speaking, they found that if someone suffers from psoriasis, it's because an ancestor has had syphilis. So, yeah, sort of as many as five, six generations back then. Yeah. But it's just, it's where the genes switch on and off, you see, and it's when they switch on and off. So, um, that's why a lot of these conditions, the genetic conditions, but, but when, when children have different environments, they will, um, it will be that they'll come out, they'll present as something different, a slightly different genetic disorder, if you like. So, for instance, we've got a, a blood disorder that comes down, and Hannah's got factor five lady, hasn't she? And thrombophilia. It's th th thrombophilia, but in my, in my brother, it's come out as a hemochromatosis, hasn't it? And high things like that. Which is high, you know, lots of, too many red blood cells, things like that. So, it just comes out, in de depending on what, or individuals have been exposed to it comes out in them a different way, but it will have an original source. Okay, so it could be different in siblings. They're yeah. The same yeah. traumatic ex experience yeah. in the generation previous. Could yeah. But it can all be fixed at birth. Right. It can all it can all be sorted. At, it can all be and shortly after. I'll give you an example. My my granddaughter, um, Hannah. Obviously, she's been through a real traumatic experience. The stillbirth the year before, etc. And uh, she was having. Um, acupuncture at the key times to take away a lot of the inherited stuff and get rid of it. She's breastfeeding, she's not vaccinating, she's um, totally loved up with a baby and she's taking, taking her for um, craniosacral therapy as well which is releasing a lot of stuff. Amazing to watch, you can see it visibly within a day that the progress that she's making is phenomenal. After, after seeing a craniosacral therapist, which is again releasing a lot of transgenerational stuff. So. Would you say most of the alternatives, I mean, I personally think that most of the alternatives are brilliant, whether it be homeopathy, cardiology, um, the needles, the pulse, so, yeah. I mean, all of those things go towards... Everything's got a place, and the more you can have, the, the better, really. Everything, massage, because the, the, with the pups, for the, the mice, it was the licking and the grooming and the... The massage and even though the... just the fact that we stick our babies in nylon, and um, and this is really interesting. My mum always said, "Oh, you know, she really wrap a baby up tightly," and actually, that's actually completely wrong. Skin to skin, and skin I'm, to skin. No wonder I'm so fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it's really, you know, and we just don't think really, you know. Yeah. If someone says that's how you do it, then we just fully. Yeah. Over I know. Even if it's against what we, we know yes. to be right yeah, yeah. in our hearts, we, I, I, vaccinations, you know what I mean? We, we know, don't we? We know, and we're, we're just like brainwashed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, guys.